Because some, some, there's some instances where you might have to make this count to six to get you the number five that you actually want in physical space. It's nice to match what you want in the exact space, but it doesn't always happen that way. Again, see where our data is at. We're at a three for that one. So we'll just keep running through our program. Okay, should be at a four. Boom, jump back down there again. Okay, should be at a five now. Okay, we're still gonna jump up to the top. It's still gonna jump back down there again. Now we're gonna set the register one equal to a zero. We're then going to jump back up to label 11. Okay. Now we went ahead and we set register two equal to a zero. Now this is okay in this instance because this logic's only gonna keep us up here only. Versus the other, the other logic at the bottom, we kept sending it back up to the top. So like one way to like think about this is jumping up to, so like th this top part of this code is jumping up to the top, whereas I guess the other one's jumping up to the top too. But the second one also jumps out to the bottom. It jumps out of the bottom. And when I say out of, I mean this is a loop right here, right? And so we hit this if statement, we jump out of this one to the other loop down there. And you can say the same for the other one, like at the bottom of the code, you jump out of that loop to jump back into the top loop. But you do that every single time. Okay, yeah. Boom. So now I'm actually just gonna go ahead and turn off our shift. I'm gonna lower our robot speed. Let's just see what she does. Shift forward. Oh no, no, no. hold on one second. Take off the step mode. Oop. So now I think we have an infinite loop of just going back and forth between the two. So now it'll infinitely loop, pick up five, pick up five. Pick up five, pick up five. Pretty sick. <laughs> I like that. Man. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, so we can kind of see this thing in action now. Um, There you go. Now we're in an infinite loop. So <clears throat> from here, like we would, you know, we would have a pick position or something like that, place position, or not, not, a, not another pick position. We'd have a place position. So maybe we want to pick up five of this one, pick up five of that one, and then go place. The other thing that we're not demonstrating here that we'll demonstrate in another one is that instead of picking this with this one tool, this robot has, and let me pause this robot so I can, this robot has three tools on it. Tool one here. Tool two here, tool three here. Okay, so how I'm just we're just picking up one, one, one. This exact type of program was what we actually utilized in this operation. Uh, but instead of doing all this under one tool, we changed the position of the tool. Let me. I'll just try to throw these in here real quick. I doubt it'll work appropriately. I think it's gonna throw a fit. Not mistaken. So whenever we go to pick two, I'm gonna set that to a different U tool. So first of all, shift coordinate to find out what tool we're currently in. Okay. So you see that right there. So right before our pick position, we're gonna add another instruction here, offset and frames. U tool number. Then we'll take it to a constant of that'll be tool two. Okay. I also need to do, oh, I got my shift key on. I need to do the same thing up here. See, again, I don't have my spaces like I like. I'm gonna put our spaces there. Insert one, two, boop. Okay. So then we'll also add a U tool to this pick one. Add a command. Add a command. 
instruction. Gotta put this instruction above here. It's gonna be a offset frame, new tool number. And then constant of one. So when we're picking one, we'll use one. When we're picking with two, we'll use two. Actually, and so also one other thing I think we can check here is in RoboGuide, shift coordinate, two. 